I'm in my new home and the walls have nothing on them. So what does that mean? Got to lit up a still small, quiet, beautiful voice inside. Now my colors are blue and like a teal, yellow, green, um, and like a magenta kind of, kind of like that a little more purpley. And so I had this vision of the ocean and the sky. So I'm going to get started. It's going to go right there. I just sat and envisioned what I wanted and now I'm going to go into my studio and I'm going to do it. Here we go. So I'm setting up my tarp. I've got these really cool brushes from Michaels. I got wide ones and I also have more detail brushes for painting the sun and the sky. You can see some of my paintings in the corner over there. And I have to show you this. So I needed a palette and cardboard makes a really good palette and I was just moving. So I have tons of like moving boxes stuff. And my mom also just moved really close by to me and she had this painting wrapped up in a bunch of cardboard just to keep it safe coming in all the way from California across the country. I was like, man, I wish I had just one more piece of cardboard. And so as I was looking towards the recycling bin where I was gonna dump all my stuff, I realized that there was a piece of cardboard that said Barbara's painting on it. You, know, you can always throw it away at the end, but it's a great way to reuse your cycle just these awesome canvases at Michael's three for $10.99 which is way better than a painting that I didn't paint even though there's a lot of great paintings out there. This thing cost me a hundred dollars all the supplies together and the colors that I'm using I've got my favorite color magenta bright yellow everything's in the bright jewel tone family bright green some brown for mountains mix and then my other favorite color to paint with which is ocean blue and they had this really awesome selection of paints color board but how awesome this is like these are my colors like both to wear but then also to paint with i also am trying something new for the first time so this is a wood graining tool opening up the brushes so good. the wood graining tool is kind of rubbery it's not i thought it was going to be plastic but it's not. I ordered these cups from Wayfair and they're cracking a little bit and so I'm actually going to use them instead of for tea for mixing my paint and my water. I'm like that painting in the background I'm going to start with light. I meditated on the first stroke and it's going to come from the left side of the painting. Oh wow that light is coming in. Can you feel that? That's how we all start from light. Oh, I love it. Sweet lemon light. And the thing about light though, it comes from the sun, right? And so the sun would give us a little bit more of a goldy type of flavor. Use a thinner brush to get more detail. So that gold definitely warmed it up a little bit. And now we're gonna start to make the sky. I mean, it's really the color of the sea. And we're right. surrounded by water here. So much blue, it's like everywhere you go. I, my body feels it when I am landlocked. Sorry, not allowed to go and to And as I paint, because my newest lesson is patience and flowing, I definitely had to have water in there, but my meditation while I paint is flow, flow, flow. And my mantra song is, Mm -hmm. Try that with me. Mm -hmm. Next note. Mm -hmm. Try that. Mm -hmm. One more higher. Mm -hmm. And back to one. Finally up to the magenta part. I'm playing with this as almost like the sunset. A couple places and then put it in. This could also be the middle of the ocean. We don't know where, where this is yet. It's We're discovering it, we're uncovering it as we paint. But these smaller bottles are just sort of like a hint of color versus the bigger bottles that are made like a lip gloss versus like the paint. So you have yeah. to use a lot. When I'm painting, everything is a wave. There's no straight lines. Everything's sort of like waved in and waved out like an infinity symbol, which also goes into the theme of the painting. Everything is a curve. And you feel that when you look at the painting. I'm very careful. As soon as I hear myself say, 
Well, that doesn't look good. I so take a I'm deep almost breath, finished I with again, painting I let it go. one. It's coming out so pretty, like water lilies. Yellow represents the light, right? And so I was noticing that the clouds are sort of overpowering this big light that I put at the top bar. So I started to say out loud, "Don't let the clouds overpower the sunlight." I was having a conversation this morning with somebody and. They were so in a bad mood and they kept saying, all I want is empathy. I just want empathy. Why can't you just say, I'm so sorry going through that. And I said, because I wouldn't be a good friend to you if I kept saying, I'm so sorry you're going through such a hard time. You can only say that for so long and then you have to tell the person, get out of your stuff and let your light shine through the clouds so that it overpowers the clouds. Like it gets through the, just one little ray of light can actually completely overpower the rest of the clouds. And then what we want to do is we want to take the sunlight and we want to just put drops of it all over the painting. Just get it out into the painting. Little birds. What I was going to do is a double of this, like do two paintings of this one. And then I sat and thought, well, actually I didn't think I just meditated. I, I listened and I said, what is my heart really want in the second painting? And you know what I really wanted? Because I'm missing California right now. It's mountains. My two favorite things about California are the beach and the mountains. So I have a beach picture and now I'm painting the mountains. Can you see that? And I had no idea exactly how I was going to make the picture. You know, sometimes you have a vision, but you're not sure exactly what it's going to look like. And I don't know how this is going to tie in with this yet, but I know it's going to tie in. It's going to be just fine. I just know added something which were fireflies. I have a class that I called Fireflyers and this would not be the same two paintings without the fireflies, the magical light that lives in all of us and around all of us at all times if we just have the courage and the strength to open our eyes, both eyes and both ears to see and hear it. And one thing that I love to do when I'm done with the painting is color the sides of the painting with color from inside of the painting. And the way that I do that is I actually, because I was raised by a Russian grandmother, her family came to this country and didn't waste anything. So I make sure to use every ounce of the paint that I poured out. And there's always a way to use it. You can see every single speck of the paint that I put in there somehow. Oh, see, and some is dripping. That was on purpose. And now I'm that it. Guys, so I finally hung up the paintings, the paintings. So this is the early morn. There's still some fireflies around, if you can see the little dots of yellow. This is sort of like midday, could be afternoon. I think I have to add some orange in there just to give it a little more warmth. But there's this big blank space. And I want to hang late afternoon or even evening in there. So how am I gonna make it a little different than the other two? Hmm, it's a new day, it's a new dawn. It's my patio. Okay, this is a painting I made many years ago and it's called Busting Out the Light. It's a morning painting. I'm really into light and as you can see, this has a lot of green in it and that has a lot of water in it. I was living in, in California at the time when I painted this one and that's much more watery. Find your truth, listen to your heart, pave your own way. This life is yours to create. Now it doesn't mean you're creating life. It could mean, could mean that you are given a life to create. So go create. This is one that I haven't hung up yet, but this is the beginning of the world. And if you look real closely, you'll see little sparks of light. Those are actually Hebrew letter Yuds and there is not an odd number of them because two yuds together is actually one of God's names, which you're not supposed to write, but I could do it in art and pretend that they're just sparks of light, which is also God's name to me. Yeah, so this is sort of like before there was day or night, there was just light. Because light is not just contained in one area, as you can see, it's everywhere, even in this shot. And so now I stare at a blank canvas and I'm going to meditate on what afternoon slash evening looks like. Here I go. And I'm ready to go. 
because that painting has the sun on the left, I'm going to start with the sun on the right hand side setting. Please, God, help me co create with you. A beautiful sunset. Oh, look how the blue's already in there because we know that the ocean is going to be on the bottom. And I would like to also incorporate some of the mountains somehow because I think every good artist takes a little bit from all the paintings that came so I think before I've got a in the series. Good sunset starting, and now I'm going to jump in with some sky. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take, look how pretty that is from before. Take a little water. This is my sunset cup and this is my water cup. There's the yellows and the blues. And I guess that's why they call it the blues. That's my Cartman Sir Elton John impression. Take some of the blue. Just a piece of sky. I love to sing. Okay. We're gonna start with the sky. And my strokes for the sky are very deliberate. There's always kind of like a very bright, serene, and dramatic sky. Okay, so my strokes and the color was becoming a little severe. And so I wanted something that was a little more like periwinkle, like twilight time. So I took the very dark blue and just a drop of it and I dipped it into white and I came up with this periwinkle color. It's so and look pretty. at this gorgeous color over the teal. The periwinkle over the teal is so pretty. So I'm gonna kind of cover the whole painting with it now because I love it. Now is I'm taking a note from myself, which is I'm filling up the white again with just a drop of the blue, right? And look how the periwinkle just comes right out. Oh my God. It's like literally just a drop of that blue. And we want some of the white foam for the, both the sea, right? And some of the white for the clouds. We need some white in the clouds. It's like too much already over here. We got to make sure we have a separation between the upper waters and the lower waters. That's one of my favorite lines in the Torah. God made the upper waters and the lower waters. And I always ask my students, what are the upper waters? What does that mean? Someone has a hose upstairs? No, it means clouds are cumulonimbus droplets of water that are separated by the liquid water downstairs. And you see what just happened? I spun this part out so that the light is breaking through the water. The magenta. And I'm gonna make it's that. Like I love that. I love when the light pops it's out. Pinky purplish. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. I'm take the white and a little get drop. Some magenta. Some pastel magenta notes in here. We're gonna get the light in. You see how that light comes in? That's so Florida. The Florida skies look like this. That's what we needed. It was a little too dramatic. We needed some some notes of pink under the clouds, just like under the bosom of the cloud. And then I'm probably going to do some yellow also to go along with my theme. So I'm just going to... So remember that little speck of green that got into the sun? I tried to erase it and it became a bird. You see that? I also um, smoothed out some of the dots of fireflies or light. I didn't really know what was going to come of it. This needs a little blending right here, but I kind of like that the light is coming out even more as the sun goes down. And now I have to figure out where is the mountain going to come from because there's a mountain in the second painting. So I think I'm going to put it over here in the background. What do you guys think? Because in California, where I lived for 17 years, there was ocean and then there was always mountains in the background. So I want to kind of keep those in there. And I found this beautiful idea here where the sun was very severe and I only saw sunlight. And then I thought, what if there was like a rain or a fog in front of the sun? And so I started putting blue, 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 blue. And it really tamed and blended nicely both the bird and also the hot red in the center. I really feel like this is twilight. 
my favorite time of day. So I have green and brown for the mountain. I'm gonna start with the green and see what it does. So if this is the horizon line, I'm gonna put some mountains in here. Kind of like that. It could be Ireland or Scotland. And I grab some brown just to give it some more definition. And some more my part is the details at the end. What am I really making? My friend David Kopp does this with computers in like the most amazing way. I, anyway, I don't really make art on computers. It's done. Feels really good. And do you see the difference between this painting and this painting and this painting? There's only one color missing in the palette and that's orange. So I have to add a tiny bit of orange to both, right? Which is the sunset quality. So for afternoon, that's pretty easy. It's very straightforward. I'm just gonna dip into the orange and see if I can find it right in the center of the sun. Maybe blending it right in the bosom of the sun. Just a bit. Yeah, now we got some orange in there. And we're, of course it comes up. Maybe a drop in the grass. Slender in the grass. Just so we have a tiny bit of it. And maybe a drop in the ocean. Because there might be some goldfish in there or something. I don't know. Okay, and the sky. I want this to be the purest light. And early in the morning, there's not really a lot of orange. So I think I'm just gonna try to follow the purple notes. Just put a couple of drops of orange in there. Kind of like the fish in the sea, the ripples. Last thing I have to add is glitter. So I got this really cool thing from Target once called the Glitter Library. I just love the name, Glitter Library. Like. That's awesome. I want to be part of a glitter library. I think the entire universe is a glitter library. It's a library of glitter because we each have our own little file. And you can see there's different color glitter. It doesn't have to be the same. Or just a little bit inside of this paste that I made, this gold enamel. Now, this is deceiving because it looks very shimmery and shiny, but it's actually not. It's just kind of like a translucent gold color. And I mixed it up with some of the glitter. And then I just you can see it from the side there's sort of like a sheen like on one side this doesn't really look like a super glittery painting but then I just sort of like dusted it you know like fairy dust from Peter Pan and now I'm gonna do it to the other ones see the difference there's a glitter sheen and then these guys don't really have it mm -hmm. sit, take a deep breath, and thank God for giving me all of the creative ideas, the energy, the vision, the paints, the space that I'm in, all of my materials, but especially the feeling that I helped God create something. That is my favorite part, because I look back at my creation, and I think to myself, there's materials here before, but something bigger than all of us created the materials, created the thought in my mind, created the store called Michael's where I got everything, gave me the money because I got the money from a job that God gave me the idea to take or create for myself. So it's all from the oneness. And when I do that, then my ego can step aside and say, it doesn't matter who likes this, what people say about it. It doesn't even matter because it's just a creation and it's an ongoing process ongoing progress, ongoing project. And thanks for joining me. I hope this inspired you to not buy a piece of art that you could make for yourself. Although, of course, I want you to support other artists, but just, you know, when you first move in someplace, um, even if it's a long vacation, do yourself a favor and make a piece of art and put it on the wall based on something that you just grew through. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm.